The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report, TV and radio. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Coming up next, it's the Pro Wrestling Report primetime television. We talk about the releases from WWE last Friday, TNA Impact that just went off the air, Ring of Honor's big TV taping this weekend, and more, including Be the Booker for WWE SummerSlam. The Pro Wrestling Report primetime television starts right now. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime TV, the longest running pro wrestling news program in the world, with your hosts, David Hero and Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. Wow. Television, wow. Damian Nelson here, along with David Octavius and Tiberius. The alleged Hall of Famer hero. You can't touch that. That's a prize possession. They, they put Rob Terry on the Miz's straw. Stop drop. it. Don't start this week, okay? Just don't, don't, don't do that. The Miz and that jacked. And uh, we got a lot to talk about this week, David Hero, including be the Booker later on for WWE SummerSlam, which is this Sunday on pay per view. We're also going to talk about TNA Impact that just went off the air a few minutes ago. The releases from WWE last week, a preview of Ring of Honor this weekend in Chicago, and as I said, be the booker for WWE SummerSlam. So firstly, David Hero, let's talk about TNA Impact that just went off the air. We saw the debut of uh, several, or the appearance of several new X Division stars, including Jesse Goddard. You're a Big Brother fan, aren't you? Absolutely. Who does you like Big, Big Brother, Brother watching over you? He, hey, I know I'm always safe that way. Uh, Mr. Pectacular had a little action and catering and uh, seemingly very full of himself, much like he has been always in his persona, and now a part of TNA Wrestling. Is this another Jay Wow kind of thing? No, they're trying to capture some Miz moments with this guy. There's only one Miz. I understand that, but it's a reality Just he's not on a cup. Well, wow, this certainly looks like him. That guy is jacked. Looks like Rob Terrier. Who's the, the guy from La Resistance? Not Rob Conway, the other Savon one? Savon Grenier. That's what it looks like. I wonder if he's getting a kickback on these. How appropriate. It's called a Slurpee Cup. Well, that's a brand. And the Miz is on it. I don't understand the connection. I do. Everything is clear now. Nice job, Miz. You seem bitter this week. Maybe you shouldn't have read those SmackDown spoilers. I'm fine with it. It's okay. Nothing good ever happens to you on a pay-per-view, so I'm not worried about it. Jeff Jarrett and his no wife Jay. Karen had, uh, you know, they're proud to be the uh, Triple A champion and uh, had some janitors in the ring. Racially motivated, don't you think? Was it? Did it go too far? I don't know. I mean, a few years ago we had the Mexicools, you know, they came out on their John Deere's. And you've got, which was great, by the way. And you've you got know? Mexican America. Right. Boy, they're really going towards that Latino market, aren't they? Oh, it's a big market. It is, but wow. Sin Cara's back on SmackDown this Friday. Really? It's been 22 days. Huh. Well, good for Sin Cara. Just back in time. You know, I bet he's on SummerSlam. That's points for me. God knows I need him. Look at that. Hector Guerrero gets involved as well, taking offense to some of the things Jeff Jarrett said, and obviously depicting those janitors as non-English speaking. How great Latinos. they're setting the table for the debut of Chavo. C H A V O. I think so. Really? Why not? Why should they? Chavito and Jeff Jarrett. That's a money-making feud. They've got enough people for Jarrett to play with without, without bringing somebody new Who? in. Who? They've got Mexican America, as we talked about. But they're heels. They're not. Jarrett's a heel. Yeah, you can't have heels oh. versus heels. Against. Not to align. Yeah. No? Yeah? I could see Ch I could see Hector bringing in his nephew, Chavo. Hmm. That could be interesting. Well, it's going to happen. What is less interesting, at least for me, is this whole Sting versus Hulk Hogan scenario, as we saw it play out further on Impact. Sting attacking or being attacked by Hogan with a chair. Uh, Kurt Angle playing a little bit with that as well. Okay. They're uh, solidly on the way to Bound for Glory. Oh, absolutely. That's the, that, right? See, they're going to let Sting go through Ric Flair first, then he gets to Hogan. And we'll see Ric Flair back on next week's Impact. 
But we saw Hogan try to get involved in that matchup between Sting and Kurt Angle this past Sunday at Hardcore Justice. Kurt Angle using the chair that Hogan brought to the ring to win the title from Sting. And now tonight, Angle and Hogan seemingly working a little bit in cahoots, if you will. I don't understand. I thought Kurt Angle quit wrestling a year ago. When last him fall. and Matt Morgan tore it up at Bound for Glory? No, 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 no. When it was Matt Morgan versus Jeff versus Ken. He was on our show on ESPN Radio a week after that, I believe, yes. and uh, explained his retirement from professional wrestling. You can check that out in the archives at pwrshow.com. Crimson David Hero, he advances in the Bound for Glory series, defeating Gunner, Bully Ray, and Scott Steiner in a four-way matchup. And after the matchup, Kurt Angle attacks Crimson. Does this not scream that Crimson goes into that championship matchup come October in oh, Bound for Glory? Oh, absolutely. That, that right there is their money match for Bound for Glory. The young superstar, the young stud, and the Olympic gold medalist. But they got to make sure Crimson bulldozes Everybody now going into that bomb for glory. He didn't bulldoze RVD at Hardcore Justice. No. Thank you know what? Crimson's lucky that Jerry Lynn was there. Jerry Lynn R V D again. Ugh. <laughs> You're not looking forward to it? You Which know? are you looking forward to more? Sting Hogan, Crimson, and Angle, or Lynn R V D. Nelson Masters. Well, I've not yet accepted Chris Masters' challenge to me. He doesn't know what he's in for, by the way. I'm underestimated. I can tell by in looking the at you. Square circle. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'd rather see Hogan Sting than. Um, well, yeah, Angle and Crimson will be a good match. Don't get me wrong. I think that Kurt Angle can make a broomstick look good. I'd rather watch that. I mean, if it's if it's those three, I want to see Crimson Angle. Hogan Sting, then RVD and Jerry Lynn. It's always the same match. Yeah. Flips and backflips and somersaults and yeah, no thanks. Is there an elbow drop involved? They usually miss the elbow drop. <laughs> <laughs> DNA Impact oh, tonight. Wait, Again, I like Rob Van Dam. As a person, I've done business with him, but going back to the well. Too many times, potentially, uh, with this. I mean, we just saw it a couple of months Why ago. Why couldn't RVD... You know what? It's not RVD's issue. It's obviously TNA's booking. I think TNA is afraid to book RVD to, to lose to a guy like Crimson. Maybe they feel like they're going to insult him by saying, Hey, can you lay down for the young kid? Whereas, you know, do business the right way. If Crimson gets over big, it's better for everybody. They need a breakout star. Did Goldberg insult Crimson with his tweet referencing him? What well, I, I don't saying follow. he's got a, a, a doctored undefeated streak, but it's nothing without the spear is nothing without the jackknife. It's fake. Goldberg, who also apparently said he's gonna, he sees himself back in a wrestling ring by the end of the year. Well, sure, probably in Japan. Really, Goldberg? What? Vince won't take him back. I mean, what? Go he's meaningless right now. Yeah. The fans who... That was 10 years ago when the fans saw him. Yeah. It's a whole new generation of fans. That was TNA Impact for this evening. And speaking of a new generation of fans, several of them attended Great Lakes Championship Wrestling Heat. Yes, uh, they this did. This past Thursday night here in the Milwaukee area. Several big-name stars on that uh, event, on that show, including... Road Dogg and Billy, Al Snow, Sky, Sky Duhati, and Playboy's Tracy Brooks. Fantastic night. And, of course, you can follow all of them on Twitter as well. It's a cheap plug. Aren't they all? <laughs> Every single one of them. You know, speaking of cheap plugs and speaking of the Road Dog and uh, Billy Gunn, we got our hands on some footage. They're, uh, they've been looking for you, David Hero, looking for their next show and looking for you. Oh, yeah. Let's go to that clip right now. I'm telling you, this is not... Okay, we, we like, come down the totem pole, but we ain't come this low to where we have a show that we can't oh, go, a spider. Through, go spider. through the woods and try to find. This is ridiculous. There's a spider on me. Yeah. Would you come on? Really? Really, come on. You hit me with the clothesline. Okay, what are we doing out here? We're looking for the next show. We're stuck in the Midwest. I've had my fill of cheese, curds, and corn dogs, but Jiminy Christmas, we need to make some money, don't we? I don't know. My allergies are killing me, though, because we're in these woods. This is good. Don't sneeze on me. Oh, I saw you. No! God, sorry. Sorry.
Sorry, sorry, sorry. You okay, guys are come too on. much. All right, so Have you seen Dave Hero? No, he's got our camera somewhere. I think he's got our money too. Really? Yeah. Well, you gave it to me. I gave it to him. We had to do a run-in on Bubba and Devon Jr., uh, the low-rent Dudley boys. And can I assure you, they absolutely are not them. <laughs> they're not the Dudley boys. <laughs> they're, are they're, they? they're not. You know, the and Dudley let's boys. not give the Dudleys a ton of credit. But uh, let's definitely not give those guys any. No, they get zero credit. So, okay, so we're leaving. This guy's filming us right here. You we're trying to is? cut a promo. Hold on, you know who this is? Who? Dave here. Dave, you got Dave. our money. Hey, this is one of our. Tired of all the lies, rumors, and assumptions in wrestling news? So are we. Join us each week for the Pro Wrestling Report on ESPN Radio for the latest news and views on pro wrestling. Visit us at pwrshow.com to check the latest schedule. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Television. Damian Nelson here alongside David Octavius of Tiberius Hero, who doesn't yet realize that the microphone will never fall because I won't make it happen. If you perhaps would start being nicer to me, Hey, 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 hey! Uh, I figure if I throw it, I could probably knock it down. Oh, you can't be throwing the Miz around. By the way, the Miz is going to be making an uh, impact this Sunday night at the, at the sum SummerSlam. I'm just saying. Well, he's going to fall. I don't know if you saw that video. You know what? Let's talk about impact. Let's talk about Kenny. I thought we were going to talk about the road dog. And no, 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 no. You know what? You doctored that. That was green screen and everything yeah, else. Of course it was, absolutely. Yep, sure. You didn't see my face on there anywhere? No, because you were behind the camera. That's what everyone thinks, but I think it was you. Anyways, Ken Anderson. Former what TNA are they champion. doing with the first round draft pick of the Super Friends? You well, what? much Keep like the Miz, maybe you ruined his career too. No, no. Ken's had two title reigns since he's been with me. For a total of how many days? Doesn't matter. 12? How many title reigns has the Miz had? Doesn't matter. He's None. on his way back. I hope by them stretching out Mr. Anderson, 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 that he's off TV for more than a week or two. Bring him back with some new fire. Because right now, the, just the coin tosses with babyface heel, heel babyface with Ken Anderson is driving me and everybody else absolutely freaking nuts. Get them ready, get them prepared, get them set for Bound for Glory. Things aren't looking so good right now for Ken and Bound for Glory. Oh, it'll be f that's still a few months away. Two. Two. Hey, we only have four <laughs> matches for SummerSlam, and that's, what, two days away? Two, you know, two nights away? What's the difference? WWE last Friday uh, announced several releases from the company, and this past Monday on 540 ESPN, we had one of those recently released talents, Chris Masters, on the program with us to explain a bit about how he found out he was no longer in the employ of WWE and what might be next for him, including the assumption that he's going to TNA Wrestling. He talks about all that. You can check that out. Uh, the interview in full is available on our app, on your iPhone and Android phone, and the full episode available at pwrshow.com, YouTube, and all over our other media channels, including Blog Talk Radio. But David Hero, in addition to Masters... Did you see this? What? Ages 7 and under. You're a grown man with a Ms. Slurpee. Melina was released from WWE last Friday after seven years with the company. Uh, she's certainly one of the most popular divas and a little bit of a wrinkle. She was popular when she could do the world's greatest entrance. Mm -hmm. And now that that's gone, she's in quite as over as she used to be. And was very over when she was part of the M&M, uh, which included her boyfriend, John Morrison, who remains employed with WWE. What does this do, if anything, to the uh, Divas division, which has seemingly seen some recent focus, especially when you look at what's going on with Natalia and Beth Phoenix and even the trial with Awesome Kong a couple of months back? I don't think it's going to hurt that much. Because what they're doing with Natalia and Beth Phoenix is they're having them beat up all the bikini swimsuit models. Mm -hmm. Melina was never the bikini swimsuit model. She was the actual wrestler, you know, along with Gail Kim. So 
I really don't think that the fans are going to miss Molina as much as everyone, th as much as they think they will right now. Molina publicly stated that while she's traveling this weekend, which was already planned with her boyfriend John Morrison, she was not even allowed into the building for Raw this past Monday night. Why should she? She's not an employee there anymore. Why is that so shocking to people? Well, people have reacted and said it's big. Hey, I fire you from this show. I'm not gonna let you in the studios. Why would I want you here? You're a distraction. Vladimir Kozlov also released after five years with the company, and uh, he had seen uh, a couple of push efforts, uh, including some championship matchups, and a monster and a beast that he was. I still remember when he debuted, and they were doing those vignettes because he was always in the crowd and on Raw, and he was, you know, very excited about Double Double E. But Kozlov gone. I don't think it's going to have that well, much Well, we used to have the original Kozlov on Monday nights. Kozlov, not Kozlov. Kozlov. Um, he's not going to be missed either. I mean, let's face it, the ones that were released had little or no impact on Raw, SmackDown, or Superstars. They weren't being used properly, if mm -hmm. at all. So, yeah, I'm sure that there's some fans that are upset about it, but Kevin Nash said it once before. When Vince McMahon gets rid of you, there's a reason for it. They weren't drawing money. Now, maybe, maybe it's because they weren't put in a position to draw money or right. whatnot, but... And this isn't a knock against any of them that got cut, but sometimes you have to make your own break. Make your own break? Absolutely. Hmm. Do tell. But, well, when they brought in Dusty Rhodes. Dusty? Dusty. Dusty. You know, and they put him in the polka dots, mm -hmm. as you will. They did that to try to bury Dusty Rhodes. Right. And he turned it around and got it over. Yeah. Certain guys have the ability to turn things around and get it over. The Miz. Fine. The Miz falls into that category. How? How? He was a complete joke coming from the real world and wanting to be a wrestler and not paying his dues and going through all the hazing in the locker room. And then he became WWE champion. He turned that lemon into lemonade. Hmm. True okay. or false? No, it, hey, you're dead on. Absolutely. So is that lemonade in there? Is that what you're telling me? Pink. Of course. Why not? Harry Smith, also gone from WWE, has spent the same amount of time there as Vladimir Kozlov. Uh, he is, uh, this one's a, a bit tricky because of the relationships involved. He is the nephew of Bret the Hitman Hart and the son of the British Bulldog, yet no longer part of World Wrestling Entertainment. And you know what, I did speak to Harry this week, and he honestly, he's excited to be released because he felt that they, they were, he was underutilized, that, that the whole new Hart dynasty wasn't used the proper way, and that's because they don't use tag teams anymore. Right. He's excited to go to Japan. Uh, he plans on doing a select few indie shows you know, around the nation, but he'll be in Chicago this weekend, Comic Friday, Con. Saturday, Sunday at Wizard World Comic Con. It's at the uh, Donald E. Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont, Illinois, actually, just a stone's throw from the Rosemont Horizon All-State Arena. Yeah, the Rosemont Horizon is what I call it. Well, you're not very adaptable to change. I got change in my pocket. He did work, did Harry Smith, for New Japan Pro Wrestling in 2005 and says that he's going to pursue that or maybe even look at some mixed martial art options. Now, David Hero, before we talk about the last one because it's a bit more compu complicated, this past Monday night on WWE Raw in that excellent segment to end the show, I thought, between Triple H, CM Punk, and John Cena, CM Punk directly asking Johnny Ace, did you call all these people you fired on Friday and talk to them face-to-face, -face, mention several by name, including Harry Smith? Who what never liked the DH moniker at all. Right. Who do you, wh wh how did that strike you, to have that fresh, new information involved in a WWE story some three well, days let's later? let's not forget, though, that a month or so ago, Kaz did the same thing to Bischoff when they fired Jay Lethal. Well, I think most people forgot that. Fewer people That's saw why it. I'm not most people. I don't forget that stuff. Uh, you know what? I thought it was great. I thought it was very edgy because Vinnie Mac and company never share the inner workings of their company out loud like that. So good for them. I was impressed. Gail Kim. She has spent time in World Wrestling Entertainment, has spent time in total nonstop action, and doesn't want to spend any more time in World Wrestling Entertainment. 
And uh, remember that battle royal a couple of weeks ago on Raw where Gail Kim disappeared like Puff the Magic Dragon under the bottom rope and back to the back? She quit WWE that night, or at least tried to. We've since learned from Gail Kim that they're not letting her out of her contract. Well, no, because they know that she would make a lot of money for TNA if she were to go back there. Gail Kim can fire up that, that uh, knockouts division pretty quick. Gail Kim was the foundation of the knockouts division. Her and Awesome Kong and those tremendous matchups she had, I believe the very first knockouts champion as well was Gail mm -hmm. Kim. She can go, but she can't go away from WWE right you now. You know what? And I know she's frustrated because now she has to sit home and get a paycheck instead of wrestle. Well, yeah. She'll be fine. But you know what? She's engaged to be married, as she said. And Absolutely. Wants to, she's done, it seems, with wrestling, which is why I question the, the TNA comment, because maybe she doesn't need that at this point in her life, and maybe she's jaded by the business. Well, everyone leaves always comes back eventually. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So If Bret Hart can come back. If Sable can come back. If Hogan can come back. Gail Kim can come back. Uh, you know, but Gail... I love Gail to death, okay? But she's very stubborn. She will not go back. Trust me. She wasn't very... Well, actually, when she left TNA back in uh, 2008, she left that door wide open and said it was a business decision. Abs well, you should have seen the contract that TNA offered her. I mean... Is it worth more than this cup? Well, those janitors in TNA made more money. Gail Kim said this on Twitter where she's been very vocal since her... Uh, attempted departure from WWE, and I quote, This is the current situation for everyone who's asking. I quit last Monday, and apparently, after a total of five years working for a company where I was not utilized or appreciated, I'm now, for some reason, valuable enough to keep me under the remainder of my contract so I can't work elsewhere. Controlling? Question mark. Thoughts? Question mark. Yeah, I mean, it's corporate America. I mean, when you sign a contract, sometimes they're going to hold you to it. How dare they? Well, you signed it to begin with, so you must have liked it. And this raises the other question, which has been a long, controversial situation for WWE. They're independent contractors, right? They're not employees. Right. Yet, they have this contract, which is a binding agreement between two parties. WWE's contract didn't say, Gail Kim, we're going to use you in X amount of matches every week and blah, 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 blah. But it did say that we will honor you this pay for this period of time, and you will contractually provide services to us for this period of time. So, I don't know if you can really fault WWE at this point, because they have let people out of their contracts early in the past. Uh, Kurt Angle Florida being a notable is also one. a right-to-work state. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure if she takes it to court, she's going to win. I mean, they can't prevent her from making a living. They'll just make it a little more difficult to get out of the contract. And uh, unknown at this time how much more time is on that contract, but if you do the math, uh, you got to assume she had a three- or five-year deal when she signed in 2008. And uh, I would believe that... Because she signed that contract in August of 2008. Mm -hmm. So. About three years ago. Yeah. But she signed a, she may have signed a four year deal. Mm -hmm. Well, are there more releases coming? All these were attributed to uh, budget cuts, it seems, for but a But you know what the amazing thing is? What's the amazing thing? Is that guys like Ted DiBiase. Junior? Right. Santino Morella. Cobra. Some of the Nexus kids who are still are all still there. You know, guys that aren't making money or weren't Diva or the Day or in the SummerSlam commercial. How about Lucky Cannon? Everyone's favorite guy in NXT gets cut too. Seems as if he has been from uh, FCW. There was several people removed from the roster page uh, in FCW, and some of uh, Lucky's comments on Twitter seem to indicate that he is indeed done with the WWE developmental territory. And what a shame because these guys have nowhere else to go. Well, they can go to the Dudley School. Mm hmm. It's in Florida. I mean, teenagers has got to wonder, boy, they just signed all these X Division guys back. They're probably thinking, damn. <laughs> you know, we probably could have said that. Well, how much do you think they're paying them? Uh, I'm, I'm, they're probably thinking, boy, we could have saved 100 bucks a guy and just, you know, bring in, you know, the guys that, that just got released. 
This uh, Saturday night in Chicago Ridge, Illinois, it's a monumental night for Ring of Honor Wrestling. Ring of Honor Wrestling at Chicago Ridge's Frontier Fieldhouse. It's going to be their very first set of tapings for air on the Sinclair Broadcasting Group all over the country. I believe 33 different television markets. And several big matches have been announced for that show, David Hero, including the championship of Ring of Honor being on the line as Davey Richards defends that title against Roderick Strong, who with him... He will have Truth Martini. Wasn't he in Right to Censor? No. BWO? Uh, Davey Richards? He wasn't in the... He was in TNA. He's now the Ring of Honor champion? He is the Ring of Honor champion, yes. Wow. Won it at Best in the World 2011. Good for Stevie. I thought he was... Is Raven with him still? Davey Richards. David. Oh, uh, see, my sheet says Stevie. See, this is what he does. He does this stupid stuff to try to make me look stupid. Fact of the matter is, I get the typo sheet. He gets stuff that's right. Also, this Saturday at uh, Ring of Honor in Chicago Ridge, it's going to be World Tag Team Championship on the line as Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas go up against the Kings of Wrestling, Chris Hero and Claudio. Chris Hero with one R. And Claudio Castagnoli and Shane Hagedorn is going to be with them and the TV title on the line as El Generico defends that belt against Jay Lethal. How long who is do you, now signed with Ring of Honor How Wrestling. long do you think it takes for Claudio Castagnoli to sign his autograph? Well, it's probably just CC. You think so? Carbon copy. Because that, I would be, con that was, that's too many letters. You know, i got to say this about Claudio, though, and uh, rumors are that they have a deal on the table with World Wrestling Entertainment. Don't have any facts to back that up, but he's an amazing performer and has an amazing look as well. So big things certainly could be on the horizon for that particular star. But this is going to be a great event at the Frontier Fieldhouse in are Chicago, you, are Ridge, you Illinois. Going to that? We will be there. The PWR cameras will be there as well. David Hero got some work to do. So bring your PWR Saturday. signs. Absolutely, bring your PWR signs and uh, also hop on over to PWRShow.com. Pick up your PWR merchandise, uh, and we'll be there all night long with Ring of Honor Wrestling uh, this Saturday in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. It's going to be a fun time, 7.30 bell time there, and the TV cameras for your Sinclair station, wherever you may be, and you can find that full list and then we have on our wrestling website, which is rohwrestling.com. David Hero, we're going to take a time out. When we come back, it's time to go to the board. Go to the tote, if go you will. Board. And talk about yes. this Sunday's WWE SummerSlam. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime television. Stop stalking your ex and be our friend on Facebook and join the tremendous worldwide discussion. Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Report. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time, and it's time for Be the Booker for this Sunday's WWE SummerSlam live on pay per view. David Hero, this one might go quickly, as as of this time, there are only four matches announced. But what happens in this segment is David Hero plays the role of the booker and makes this show go with the announced matches as he would make it go if he were the one making the decisions backstage in WWE. What we're also going to be doing, big, big announcement, David Hero, just before SummerSlam this Sunday. At PWRShow.com, it's the SummerSlam pre-show. And on that show, we're going to give you our predictions of how things are actually going to go down on SummerSlam to prepare you for that big event. And as you see right at the bottom of your screen, the post-show of SummerSlam right after the event on Sunday, exclusively on Blog Talk Radio. So, David Hero, without further ado, let's uh, get down to it and get crack a lacking, if you will, with our first matchup, which is for the Divas Championship. It is Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Let's not forget, she's a super friend now. What? Oh, I picked her up on radio. Don't act dumb to me here, amigo. I had to drop Matt Morgan. To pick oh, up yeah, 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 because what you do is wait for a pay-per-view match to be announced and then pick people to go on your little uh -huh. crappy roster. Yeah. And I want to refresh your memory. The point spread right now is only about 70 points difference That's between fine, you and I. Because and you, know you want to talk about your little super friends. Boom. Boom. 
Actually, I don't have Orton, but boom, boom. I got all kinds of people on this pay-per-view. you got this guy here. And who's got all the champions? This guy. Because I still got Kurt Angle, even though he's the TNA world champion. Anyways, we're talking about SummerSlam. Who has all the points? Bro, you got that. Okay. I score. Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix, a now uh, heel persona, if you will. Right. And she doesn't like the Barbie doll that no, is Kelly Kelly. She don't. So that's why she's going to take the place of Awesome, awesome Kong and destroy... Kelly Kelly at SummerSlam because they gotta get the wrestling going again and she is gonna it'll be a decisive and convincing victory over Kelly Kelly and that's where the ball will start rolling where she's gonna roll over Kelly Kelly and then it'll probably be uh, Alicia Fox, Maurice, so on, so on. Natalia? So on. No, well, well, well they're together. Exactly. So that would then set up Beth Phoenix against Eve, who is still the Wonder Woman Golden Girl. In With the, new music? W yes, absolutely. Beth Phoenix, easy one, two, three. Kid? Sure. And that's points for the Super Friends. Phew. A couple. Kelly Kelly, the current champion, you see a new champion, or you would have a new champion, a crown on Sunday. Grudge match. Sheamus versus Mark Henry. I'm actually intrigued by this one. Sheamus, now the face of SmackDown, or a face of SmackDown, versus the monster, Mark Henry. Bro, you got to put him on there, okay? Uh, it was written. I know, but people at home can't see it. Well, I mean, the board's white. I know, but i got to highlight the guy. This is an interesting match, because they really... You gave him a tan, is what you did. I did. They've built up Mark Henry to crush everybody. Big Show and Kane's been the monster, he's been rolling... Do, they, do you lose all the steam in one match against Sheamus? No. What I do here, this is a double DQ. There is no winner. because there's, There is no loser. There is no loser. So there's life still in this for the next month, maybe two months afterwards, to get them both rolling so it means something more. Well, Mark Henry's on his way, seemingly to the championship picture once this whole situation is done in our next matchup. Well, he Christian could be. I mean, Orton. if he beats Sheamus, then that means he's going to go with Randy Orton next, if, or Christian. Well, we'll talk about that matchup now, I guess, because I guess the way this one pans out, Randy Orton versus Christian for the World Heavyweight Championship, will determine maybe if somebody in this previous matchup may win, because if it's Christian, it won't be Sheamus. If it's Orton, it won't be Henry. So when you think of or won't be Sheamus no DQ matches, right? Is this what this one is? Uh, no holds barred, I believe. Okay. It is. Well, it's a no DQ, is what mm -hmm. it really comes down to. Who's more devious, Randy Orton or Christian? That's a good question. As of late, Christian's shown some. Come on, amigo. You know Randy Orton is not going to lose a no holds barred match to Christian. There's no way. Last month? Unless there's. Was, that was a gimmick match set up for this match. If Randy Orton cannot beat Christian in a no holds barred match, then there's no match you can beat him in. If he's really the viper and can pull off all these amazing things, it's Randy Orton's match to win. So then Sheamus beats Mark Henry? I'm no, sorry, Mark no, Henry no, beats no, Sheamus? No, no. Maybe, but we're just booking this for right now. I'm not going to go two months in the future with, fu with future matchups. We let's did that last week. Right, that was too much work. So let's just figure Randy Orton over Christian which is more points for the Super Friends as well. And I don't book this for the Super Friends. I book for what makes sense. Because let's not forget, Survivor Series is not that far away. Madison Square Garden. Okay. So they got to start getting things set up for that because guess who's going to be returning there? Team Bring It? The Rock. Which now brings us to... The main event. The main event. For the WWE Championship... CM Punk versus John Cena, both men right now recognized as the WWE Champion. But only one man will walk out the undisputed WWE Champion. And in the middle of those two men will be the special guest referee, H Triple H, who seemingly has a vested interest in this matchup, especially after this past Monday Night's Raw. And this is an interesting match because it can go one, it can go one of two ways. Punk or Cena, right? If Punk wins, the wrestling universe is happy. If Cena wins, well, now half, three quarters of the universe is unhappy. Can Triple H let his ego 
not get in the way of this match. Okay? And Ego was well talked about well, this past month. You got to figure, where does it go? You have the enforcer in the middle of the ring. So, Triple H can't make it. Triple H has to be involved with the finish somehow. That's why. He won't just stand there. I like John Cena to beat CM Punk, bring both belts back, which then sets these two on a collision course down the road. Because Cena can then go to work with ADR, but you already knew that. And then Triple H and Punk, which only gets Punk more steam moving forward. And in that scenario, if it is Triple H and CM Punk, you don't need the spinner title to be involved no. with that. Imagine the promos back and forth with those two. Sarcastic, smarky, snarky, the whole thing. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But if Triple H really wants the best for the company, he has to put CM Punk over. But he's got to screw him here first, or kiss him first, before you get to the main event. Lights on or off? It doesn't make a difference. Well, that's SummerSlam, this Sunday on pay-per-view, the way David Hero would book it, and it would be as follows. Well, you're not, you're not an independent contractor. You can just walk whenever you want. You have contractual obligations. Beth Phoenix defeats Kelly Kelly. Sheamus and Mark Henry will battle to a double disqualification under David Hero's scenario. Randy Orton wins back the World Heavyweight Championship from Christian. And John Cena walks out of SummerSlam, the undisputed WWE Champion, so that CM Punk and Triple H can move forward with a new chapter in that saga. SummerSlam is this Sunday on pay-per-view. We'll be with you right beforehand, 6 o'clock p.m., BWRShow.com, with a preview of SummerSlam. And then the post-show right after SummerSlam at PWRShow.com and Blog Talk Radio as well. All the happenings from Sunday's WWE SummerSlam event. We'll see you this Saturday at the Ring of Honor event in Chicago Ridge. And then again on Sunday for the SummerSlam live coverage. <laughs>